So, um, what I've asked here is the question, leadership development, are we on the right track? The answer is no, so you can go now if you want. Uh, but I'd like to explain why we're not on the right track. So, in Britain, and I do not know if this is true of Greece, you, you could tell me perhaps uh, at the end, um, there's been an increasing interest in leadership. So, leadership is very much the buzz phrase. Um, this has been true probably for the last three or four years. Prior to that, the major focus in Britain was on management, not on leadership. And indeed, many of the innovations like business schools, uh, management competence frameworks, management education, the MBA, all of those were introduced to improve British management. And um, I think some of you are old enough to remember um, the 60s and 70s when Britain was seen to be a failing industrial power. And the government of the day became very interested as to why this was. This would be in the mid-70s, maybe 30 years ago. And a series of reports were commissioned which looked at British management compared to its leading competitors. And at that time, the four nations chosen were the United States, Japan, France, and Germany. I, I suspect now they might include China and perhaps India, but at the time, those were the four selected. And the conclusion was that British management, rather than British workers, were the problem one reason for this was because of the poor levels of education of British management, because most people with high levels of higher education in Britain did not go into industry or management. Most went into either the civil service or to the BBC or to the city of London, the financial centre, rather than British industry. Um, and a second conclusion was that management development in Britain was deficient, both in terms of the amount of time spent on training managers, but also in the quality of that training and development. And most of these studies showed that if you compared British managers with Japanese managers, American managers, French managers, German managers, British managers had much less training and development, both before entering management and after being appointed as a manager. All of these countries did it very differently. The, the Americans, by and large, emphasized the MBA. The Germans emphasized in-company training. The Japanese emphasized mentoring and coaching. And the French emphasized the Grand École. So all of these had very different approaches. But what united them was a commitment to the education and development of managers which was something that the British um, state didn't have a commitment to. So you had a big investment in Britain, and I can obviously talk about more about this if you want, but we had, a, we had a big investment in Britain in management education, and a huge explosion in MBAs, an explosion in business education, and all those areas. So um, by the 1990s, instead of perhaps 500 people with an MBA, there were 100,000. Instead of two institutions offering MBAs, there were 120. Um, business became the most popular subject choice for undergraduates. And in addition, there were lots of companies, um, BA, British Airways would be the main example often quoted, who seemed to turn themselves around because of their investment in management development. So management development became a big thing, and in many ways, Britain became very successful um, in terms of the amount of training managers engaged in and the amount of management education people had. Um, so that by the end of the 90s, there was very little difference between Britain, France, Germany, and America around how many days were spent on training and development. However, people then decided this was not enough. Management was a good thing. Management involved useful skills, but, so the argument went, it did not help turn companies round. It did not help inspire people. 
It did not lead them through difficult times. It did not contribute to large-scale um, change. So the focus has been very much on leadership, and leadership has been seen as a panacea for many organisational ills. So currently, for instance, if there's a failing school, um, a school that its pupils are not doing very well in, the um, conclusion will often be it's poor leadership and the head will be replaced. Or, the programme I referred to earlier, aspiring heads will have to undertake leadership development if they are going to succeed in becoming heads of schools. This has also been the, the case with the police force, which has had a heavy emphasis on leadership training. The civil service, um, the health service, most areas of government, the focus has been very much on developing leadership. So I, I want, first of all, to jump to the last slide to say something about why that is, and then I'll talk about approaches to leadership development. Okay, so the argument was that management is a uh, good thing, but it is limited. It focuses on what's on the right of this slide. Leaders, however, the argument runs, are people who concentrate on the left of this uh, slide. So managers may very, very well be good at managing today. They're good at budgets, they're good at planning, resource management, all those things. But it doesn't prepare the organisation for the future. What you need are people who prepare the organisation for the future, not just people who can manage it today. So leaders are about tomorrow, managers are about today. Managers may well be very good at delivering targets, delivering efficiencies, delivering outputs. That might be important, but it's not enough. You need also to develop the organisation for an unknown future. So managers are more concerned with targets, leaders are more concerned with what the right direction of the organisation should be. So they're thinking about where should the organisation be in the future, not just how did it do against last month's targets. Um, managers might be concerned with efficiency, doing things within a paradigm, but not necessarily about whether that paradigm is fit for purpose. Is the organisation in the business it should be? Is it doing, producing the right goods and services? Is it serving the right markets? To ask those questions requires leadership. So managers are good at utilising resources, but less good at innovating. Managers are good at what to do, they're less good at how to do it and why to do it. Managers tend to have an internal focus. They focus on organisational processes. This may be sufficient, may be necessary, but isn't sufficient. Um, you also need an external focus on external stakeholders, which is what leaders are supposed to provide. Um, managers tend to use authority to get things done. Managerial prerogatives, the managerial position, managerial hierarchies. Leaders, however, are more concerned to facilitate the development of people and to realise potential. Uh, managers focus on control, leaders on empowerment, and uh, a famous phrase, uh, managers tend to want to do things right, but don't necessarily think about the right thing to do. Leaders are more concerned with what is the right thing to do, which clearly has an ethical dimension as well as a strategic dimension. So, for all these arguments were put forward as to why management was not the same as leadership and why organisations needed both managers and leaders. Not necessarily in the same person, but certainly in their top team, you needed both kinds of people if the organisation was to survive. 